what is this lizard? It bit me on a beach in Naples. Oh, that's the infinite death lizard. You're gonna die for infinity. Looks like a Cuban knight. Is that word anol? It, it doesn't really matter, but hey, I think we're gonna learn a lot today. Security camera recorded this guy knocking on my door late at night. What's this in his hand? Huh, an old phone. <laughs> With that attire, it could be someone hunting dogs. Sometimes the dogs will track animals onto others' land and must be found with tracking devices. May have just been asking permission to search for their animals. This is common in my area. Hmm. An old radio frequency tracker. Well, I mean, looking at it, you can tell it's old at the very least. This is a silly band, but I have no idea what animal slash thing it's supposed to be. Might be turned the wrong way? No, I can't figure that one out. I'm incredibly excited for such a mundane object to be totally stumping the sub for once. <laughs> I don't know. I have I, I have nothing for you here. Boise, Idaho. My husband and I heard a big crash at 5 a.m. Like something had fallen off of the roof. He found this feather mass on the ground just now. Said it feels like it has a membrane inside of it. This is in our side yard. About four feet of gravel between a fence and the side of the house. All right, let's take a look. Huh. It's a bird ball. Okay, show this to my wife. She's a zookeeper of 15 plus years. The inside very likely has fly eggs on it, and the feathers are likely from a duck. Down in the cutaway section gives it away. Hmm. But she's never seen a feathered mass grow off of a bird like this. So possible tumor that got pinched off the main body? It just unfortunately grew that and it fell off? My friend found this scaffold-like structure on a trip. There was a paintball slash airsoft field and a hotel nearby. But I'm confused about the purpose of this. Located in somewhere, Europe. Huh, that is actually quite scary. Um, I don't know why I can't stop looking at it. It looks like it's straight out of a horror movie set. It's a 3D maze used in kids' camps or other outdoor activity clubs, for paintball, airsoft, trekking, etc. In a paintball setting, it could be used to hold a flag or another capturable objective. Well, that makes sense. Solid metal kiss that was in our bag of candy cane kisses. Is this part of the machinery? That's kind of cool, though. <laughs> Definitely not a part of the machine. Since it's the same size and shape, I would say it's a QA gauge to help operators verify shape and portion size at a glance. I saw this in my yard. Is this just a type of worm, or is there a parasite on it. I saw it breathing, and they have some sort of heartbeat, I think. So it is alive. Hmm. I guess, sorry, I gotta get real close here. They're in love? Uh, <laughs> that's two worms making more worms. Holy crap, I witnessed worm sex? Hell yeah, dude. Isn't nature gorgeous? Found these in my cooked spaghetti. The sauce was canned. Oh, what in the world? Ew. They definitely look like rosary peas. Symptoms of poisoning include nausea, vomiting, convulsions, liver failure, and death. Usually after several days. Don't eat that spaghetti, bro. And if you already ate it, go to the doctor. Ooh, not what I want to hear, man. My friend just moved into a new flat, and this is in her neighbor's garden. Oh, not in, it's her whole garden. Huh, it's, you know, at first glance, you're like, whoa, <laughs> but let's see. Wild guess, but they're probably just having fun with a freaky garden. <laughs> yeah, right? I like that one. Sometimes it's not quite that deep. A massive wrench I inherited. Weighs 30 plus pounds. Novelty or functional? Hmm. I don't see how it could be super functional. I know that there are bolts and nuts that are that big, but I don't think this in particular would be the way to go about it, right? Yep. It's for real. Big bolts require big wrenches. Anchor bolts, large towers, etc. How many dudes does it take to use, though? Do you have to, like, hang off of it? Found in a forest in Sweden about a meter from the ground. Roughly 20 centimeters in size. Hard to the touch, but drips liquid when knocked. Ew. Oh my god. Okay, thank you for that. Oh, jeez. Looks like a polypore fungus that's exuding excess moisture. Called gutation? I don't like that. Are my parents' neighbors engaging in psychological warfare? This is attached to a dolly pointed in their yard and sounds a very loud alarm twice a day for two minutes. What is it? Huh. Looks to be a vibrating horn. Maybe 874 series. You're really getting down to series and you're thinking maybe? Made by Edward Signaling. Data sheet states an output of 103 dB. These types of horns are usually used in individual settings where ambient noise is high. I would guess the neighbor has hooked it up to cause a disturbance or just to be a general nuisance. That's literally the only reason you put something like that up, in my opinion. Driving through Erie, Pennsylvania? Weird circle in the sky. Lots of folks pulled over to take pictures of it. Huh. Now nah, it's probably a troll smoking a cigar practicing his smoke rings. A blown transformer smoke ring. Or that. I like my explanation better. Found in Guam in shallow water. Three meter diameter disc. Top looks like polyester in a honeycomb shape that's fiber 
fiberglass to flimsy aluminum disc. I'm stumped on this one. Never seen anything like it. All right, let's see. Whoa. Huh. That is probably the most interesting thing yet. It was a flying saucer. That is absolutely a rocket part. <laughs> Saw this in a forest in Germany. Don't go in. Don't you dare go in. It's a fridge or an old time cold room. Basically a room covered with dirt for insulation. A root cellar. What is this thing we found while renovating? We haven't touched it since my dad thinks it's an explosive from World War II. About 10 inches long? It does look like one. Uh, uh, I wouldn't touch it either. It looks like a World War II British II mortar round. They did not use chemical weapons in World War II, so the filter is likely a high explosive could- Oh, I see. I see. Call the EOD and don't touch it. Help identify this piece of bumper from a hit and run with a cyclist now in critical condition. All right, detectives, on the case. Right front from a 2009 Camry. God dang, some of these people are insane, man. I wouldn't be able to figure that out. Found this small kettle years ago. Tried searching for a similar one, but I've always come up with nothing. Anybody have any idea why this has a unique shape? Wall it for scale. Oh, is that, um, I don't think that's a kettle. Do you pee in that thing? Um, that's a portable men's urinal for bedbound patients? In Italy, it's called, well, the pan. And yes, it's used to pee in when you can't get out of bed. It is sometimes also called, uh, oh, I see, the parrot due to its shape. Uh, I got you, I got you. Uh, I hope you haven't been using it as a kettle. That would be freaking hilarious. Cones of Dunshire found in German supermarket, I guess? Or they're hats for your gnome. It's a, well, that, full of candy and or school supplies that kids get on their first day of school. Forgot to write down that this is a German tradition. Well, that's good to know. A specific type of hammer from my work at a college in Scotland. I like that shape. It doesn't seem right, but you know, there's something fun, of magical, it's magical. It is a blacksmith hammer, there you go. That was gonna be my first guess. Blacksmith hammers have different styles of peens depending on the task you want to accomplish. There are straight peen, if you held the hammer by the handle, the peen would be parallel to the ground. Cross peen, I, I hate the word so much. Like I know, I know, but still. Found in my dad's room. Really hoping it's not a sex thing. I'm pretty sure you put those on boots? Yeah, it goes over shoes to give grip on ice. Oh, oh, thank God. Whew. I was afraid there myself. Goat in a field in Scotland. Appears to have had handlebars added to his horns? What? Who the hell did that? That, uh, hold on. Having had goats before for a number of years, I'm confident this goat is a dumbass. And after about the 900th time that farmer had to free this guy from a fence that he'd stuck his head through, horns and all, and couldn't get it back out, the farmer settled on this method of ensuring that the goat couldn't stick his head through far enough to get his horn snagged. Well, there you go. I found this award glued inside of a book while cleaning out a relative's house. Can someone tell me which brand and what award it is, please? All right, let me zoom in here. That's the hammer and sickle. Is it a Soviet Union medal? Kind of looks like it. Looks like it's been smuggled or hidden. 15 years of impeccable service of the USSR <laughs> Ministry of Internal Affairs. Yeah, okay. That's really interesting. What is this thing? It perfectly fits in each other and there was some sort of liquid in it. All right, let's see. That looks like a, a bud grinder. It's an herb grinder, mostly for weed. Yeah, okay, I was gonna say. <laughs> what is this thing on this serial killer's head while he was in court? Yeah, what the hell? <laughs> I've never seen that before. He's partially deaf. It's basically a giant hearing aid. Sound amplifying headphones. Okay, heavy mass hanging on transmission cables. Wow, that really truly is a heavy mass. What the shit? This is an art intervention in a Brazilian university. This thing should be a meteor. Yes, it's in intervention and not installation. Usually the term installation is used in closed spaces. Gotcha. What is this rodent that just climbed out of my toilet? What the hell are you? And he climbed out of the toilet? I always forget that that's possible. Well, let's see what Reddit has to say. The flat tail makes me want to say flying squirrel. They're super common in, I'm really bad with, if, if this is a, about a state, I'm just bad with them, but nocturnal, so folks don't realize they're around. Also have pretty huge eyes for a rodent that size. To pull his legs apart, okay, and see if he has flat I guess. They also have more of a rat outline slash hind end than a gray, which matches your little buddy. An adult gray would also have gnarly claws, bigger feet, and I'm like 80% sure it's a flying squirrel. Poor dude. Yeah, he or she fell into the sewer vent on your roof. I have a ton of oak trees around my house, and after finding the second dead squirrel in my vent pipe, I went on the roof and installed a
a vent cap that's specifically made to keep out rainwater and rodents. It's actually very good to know about. Weird, squirming, living Lovecraftian nightmare on our lawn chair this morning. Oh, that's just Flumhagum. You heard me right. Okay, for real though, what in the world are you? Let's see, probably uh, this. Oh, that turns into a moth? Apparently that's a caterpillar with fuzzy false arms on its back. Ah, I see. We're looking at its belly. Gotcha. I found this squishy thing in my monster coffee. I don't know what it is, and I'm pretty grossed out. Oh, oh dear. Sorry, it's just, ugh. I don't like, ugh. things like that are super gross. It seems more like sweetener that has hardened. Something like molasses or some other ingredient that's hardened, like xanthal gum. I'm gonna go ahead and say that this is salt, because that sounds realistic. Switch on the back of an old clock labeled Miracle Eye. What is this? Miracle Eye? Okay. Reduced sound when the room is dark. Oh, that name doesn't make any damn sense. Me and my parents found this in our backyard earlier today. It reads, do not enter poison gas. It's on a circular concrete thing. Oh boy, it's the cap to a septic tank. Oh great. What is this tube full of balls in the wall in a home built in the mid 90s? That read really weird. <laughs> it was like a bad poem for a second. And yeah, this is new to me. Oh, a termite indicator. How, how does it indicate, you know, Sometimes I just get more curious. Now I want to know how it's supposed to function. I'm curious. My grandfather told us not to remove this when renovating. <laughs> a replica of the Mayan calendar? Oh, an Aztec calendar, excuse me. Funny thing, I remember a bunch of these a while ago being smuggled over the border and they were made of meth. I guess it's time to test out that Aztec calendar, huh? Found at the bottom of the lake. It's booze. I haven't died yet. Huh. Well, I must say that's a first. You found a bottle of liquid at the bottom of a lake and decided to drink it? Since this was in Canada. Could this be an ice wine? My wife and I had some while honeymooning in Canada, and it's very sweet and syrupy, and usually in the small uh, half-liter bottles, excuse me, or 0.5 liter, but whatever. Arrived in the post for me, small glass tubes with two tiny ball bearings in them. No idea and not something I ordered. Okay, um, I believe those are rattles that you can put inside of fishing lures so they make noise to attract fish. Thank you. Must be an eBay mix-up. My brother found this missile in the woods in Tennessee. Holy crap. <laughs> Kinda looks like an Honest John short-range ballistic missile, but honestly, I highly doubt that a live one just lays around. But just make sure to contact your local authorities, even though it's probably just a dummy. Why is it called an Honest John short-range ballistic missile? Honest John? John's not that honest. What is this scanner that a rooftop cop had at a protest? Seemed to be shining a green laser at certain people in the crowd. Okay, I don't know why that looks really funny, though. <laughs> Uh, picking out specific targets for ground police. It's easier to track an individual through a crowd from above. This may be because they're armed or something else that makes them high priority. Mm-hmm. Snipers are out of the question. Firing into a fast-moving ground mass of people would only end badly. Let's just move on. This purple sky in Southern California seen at 1.30 a.m. and lasted for only about five minutes before fading away. Okay, but that's awesome now? Uh, or, or it's bad. I think we're about to find out. That color's been posted before. It's always been related to commercial pot growing. <laughs> Oh, it's the grow lights. Wow. I knew there were wind farms around here, but I never knew that the grow lights were that... Yeah, that is really bright. What is this a reference to? Growing cannabis? Posted with the title, If You Know, You Know. Y yes. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Growing weed or mining cryptocurrency. Either way, there's a lot of hash power in that room. <laughs> uh, they're paying out the ass for it. Gold spherical items with colored enamel. Very cool. Very pretty. Could look kind of like apples. But once you get to the top, it's more strawberry e or like solid fruit e. I don't know. Let's see what we got. They appear to be peaches. Oh, okay. Yeah, I see it. In Chinese symbolism, the peach is often a symbol of longevity and given as a wish for a long life. These cloisons fruits are just small ornaments shared as gifts or sold as tourist items and or in import stores. Apples and pears are also common. Hey, I was in the right vein. A wooden box with glass window, approximately eight inches tall, has a wooden flap on a hinge covering the glass. The back has a large round hole. Okay. Uh, I'm going with, I'm, I'm going to play these as a guessing game. You're just going to have to deal with it. Uh, I'm going with the shadow box or some kind of tip or display jar or something like that for a countertop. Uh, let, let's see what we got here. Uh, this looks more like the housing for an old clock. Huh. But with the actual clock mechanism removed, the glass at the back was most likely there so you could see the movement of the clock. The round opening at the front would be an indication that this was a clock face. 
Ah, I had it backwards. Yep, case for an old brass carriage clock. All right, I'm not gonna give myself a hard time on that because we were looking at it all backwards. Approximately 3.5 foot long metal cylinder with a handle found in woods of a park. <laughs> Sorry. You pulled a 3.5 foot long metal cylinder out of park? Uh, diameter a bit un under a foot. What is this thing? Okay, this is gonna sound really weird, but uh, I'm going with actually antenna because this looks like uh, it's the wrong wavelength because it's way too thick, but this looks kind of like the antennas that they use to se test cell phone signals, or at least they used to. Uh, they're probably much smaller now, but they used to be mounted on top of pickup trucks. Uh, you'd see them driving around uh, service areas. Case to hold survey equipment. It seems most likely it is a carrying case of some sort of what there may not be enough information. Oh, uh, okay. User each niche. Thought maybe a ventilation duct hose case and user uh, Arblux, Arblux, suggested a power moon light case. Both of these seem like a possibility to me, but due to the lack of, l lack of any numbering, lettering, labeling, I'm not sure we'll ever know. It's absolutely a carryable thing for holding other things inside. <laughs> We're gonna call the mystery solved there. It's just, it's a carryable thing for carrying other things inside. It seems to be made uh, from 10 inch ductwork and quite well made at that. Could also be a chamber for steaming wood, but I would expect to see uh, something for latching the lid on both sides of the open end, not just the one. Yeah, I'd, I'd be really curious to look inside, but I also I also don't really want to look inside. What is this thing? Big metal rack. Looks like for retail use. Metal peg slots on the side, wheels on bottom. Nothing is retractable or detachable found on the side of the road. I'm gonna go with automotive just based off the off the colors. I do like that they're rolling at home as a, as a coat rack. Uh, but let's see, uh, I think it is missing the removable shelves. Something like this and a link. I think the metal colored vertical bars are just for decoration. They might match neighboring units that do have bars for hanging clothes. Oh, okay, this unit was probably for holding folded clothes on shelves like t-shirts. That's an industrial looking store. I, I dig the style. Okay, I see, I see, I see now in the demo image. Uh, how it's supposed to look. I still I still dig the, the bright yellow. Pen uh, with metal balls with numbers next to where the balls drop in. Some balls are gray found in attic. What? Is, does it change out the tip or something? Ah, oh, that, that, it just looks cool. I have no idea what this is for. Yeah, absolutely no idea, but I, now I wanna know. About seven balls have a different color. Uh, maybe it's a random generator to suggest numbers you fill in a lottery ticket, e.g. six plus one out of 49. And a post about a similar pen, lotto pen. Huh, Diane gave me this many years ago. If you print point the writing end up, all the balls move to an open area. Shake, put the ball point down, and the lottery picks show up in the window. Taken uh, for the Macro Mondays group theme of numbers. That's very cool. I'm not entirely sure how random your uh, your numbers are going to actually be, but humans are notoriously bad at actually picking random numbers, so that's that's a really good you know step in the right direction. What is this object I found on a beach in Yorkshire that has holes in and feels like a mix between stone and plastic? Uh, the it looks like a very tiny spatula. I'm assuming that's like a broken piece of something else, like much larger than that, because that that doesn't look like the entire thing. Uh, let's let's see if if Reddit has solved it. It's gonna sound weird, but please touch your tongue to it. If it feels like your tongue slightly sticks to it, it's gonna be made of bone. Absolutely, 100% bone. Thank you. Oh, okay. So it's 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 a bone thing. Bone, old toothbrush? What? Victorian seems right. Thank you all so much. This is definitely it. Never crossed my mind that it could be this, but I'm now the proud owner of uh, Victorian's toothbrush and couldn't be more fascinated. Solved. That's really cool. Oh, the, this entire subreddit is full of nerds and I absolutely love it. Ah, oh, this is the kind of internet content we need more of. Bone toothbrush, uh, toothbrushes. Oh my, what? What the? I don't even want to know how that works, but um, bone toothbrush. Oh, bristles are missing. Oh, I get it now. The holes are where the, okay, all right. This is genuinely fun. This is just genuinely fascinating. I realize I'm violently nerdy, but y'all should have figured that out by now. This is your fault if you were expecting anything else. I see these weird metal boxes in UK pubs 
down by the bar. And other than impromptu chewing gum bins, what the heck are they? Uh, I'm doing my usual guess thing. Spittoons? Maybe? Or ashtrays? It's an ashtray! Now a bin that sends the smoking ban. Yep, there we go. As a 40 year old, it's amusing to me that there are now a generation of drinkers who don't recognize big pub ashtrays. And before that, uh, they were spittoons. Yeah, haha, -ha, I was doubly right. I only know this because there's, uh, there's a lot of buildings in New York that have ashtrays and things built into surfaces, especially like large public areas. There's a lot of hotel lobbies that would have uh, ashtrays built into like marble countertops and things like that around the perimeter because it would be like a large gathering area and people would just smoke in the hotel lobby. And some of them are like, you know, don't smoke kids, but the, uh, but the work, like the actual metalwork of the ashtrays is just really beautiful and fascinating. These are found on street corners in Daytona Beach. Huh, I've been there many times. Uh, they appear to just pump water up only for it to go immediately to the storm drain. I've seen a few different designs. Uh, I'm guessing that's a sump pump or a lift, st or uh, that's small for a lift station. And sump pumps usually go to sewage. I don't know, let, let, let's, let's see. They're timed valves to keep the water in the distribution lines from getting too old. When the water is in the pipe too long, the chlorine level drops too much and the water is unsafe. Oh, source, I run water plants. Interesting. I grew up a little farther north, uh, right around the Florida Georgia line, and most of our homes were wells. So I don't think we had city water, but like once, the rest of the time it was all well water. Metal spring clamp item, about six inches long, possible medical clamp or spreader. Metal ring slides down to close the legs. Yeah, I'm going with medical as well, although it does look kind of like those uh, snap ring closers. But let's let's see what the answer. It's a spring retractor. Once you've made an incision in the chest, uh, for th thoracic surgery, uh, you, know, so you use this to hold the incision open. Uh, I've seen something similar called an, uh, a spring retractor. Uh, okay, cool. Very cool. I'm glad you. I'm glad you know. Uh, anyways, next most handheld tool with wooden handle and hook like scraper with an open metal pouch. Uh, this almost looks like some sort of weird pipe. Handheld tool with wooden handle. I'm sorry, I'm still curious. I'm trying to figure this out. I would assume like drill a hole with the top thing and then scrape something out with the bottom. Uh, all right, let, let's see what we've got. It's a tool for an art known as batik. You fill the cup with molten wax and it drips out of the spout. Oh, using that, you make patterns on a fabric and then dye the fabric. The dye doesn't stain the fabric where the wax has been applied. Oh, that's cool. Once you finish the dyeing, you iron the wax between sheets of a material that absorbs the wax. We used to do it at school. You went to a cool school. I also just looked it up and it's just, it's really cool. You'll also recognize it if you just Google image search batik. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that, but yeah, you, you'll recognize what, what the look is. This looks cast. Not sure if it's aluminum, but it's light. I have a picture with my hand for size comparison. It was bought from a kitchen section at an estate sale and no one knew what it was for there. Sorry, and no one knew what it was for there. There's a divot in the center of the shape, but no markings anywhere. That looks like a, a bed warmer. I think you would put hot coals in the middle and you would close this and you would put it into the bed and it would uh, warm the bed. It does look really small though. So uh, it might also be for like cooking. Uh, let's see here. Uh, this is the light and mighty lemon squeeze press. I was so off. It was a bar utensil in the eighties. Yeah, I had no sense of scale. I guess the wood grain should have given it away that it was much smaller than I was thinking. I guess that would be way easier to manufacture than the, like a center post and you know, much more durable than a plastic one. I'm at the point where like, I don't even care if I get these right. I'm just fascinated to learn this stuff. Solid feeling balls. <laughs> Look, I went past the pen ball one, but solid feeling balls. Phrasing. Uh, anyways, uh, that chime and jingle at a low tone when you shake them. Oh, those look like meditation ball. I'm not sure what they're actually called, but they used to sell them in St. Augustine, Florida. Uh, stress balls. Bowding balls. Uh, they're for stress and concentration, I think. Yep. I always liked them, but I, I never really had a justification for them. And they would have used up like double my allowance and uh, like... I just, I, n I never got around to getting them. Now I kind of want to hear them again because they sound really pretty. What's this peeled silver sheet thing inside my microwave? Oh, oh, that's the covering for what's called the magnetron. It's the angry thing that flips your food's uh, water molecules back and forth. 
Uh, it should not be punctured. I'm not sure about this. I'm genuinely not sure about the safety of that. Uh, let's see what we got here. Uh, waveguide cover. No harm in it, in it as it is, but they're cheap to replace. OP, this is the answer. However, I would recommend replacing it. It is designed to prevent the microwave radiation broadcasted, broadcasted by the magnetron back into the machine compartment. Oh, where the magnetron resides and uh, potentially damaging it or another component. Edit after further research and other comments. The cover does protect the antenna from grease, water, and food particles in addition to allow even distribution of microwave radiation to the food. Uh, thanks for the other comments. For clarification, always learning. This is more of what the internet should be. I'm not gonna soapbox about this too long, but just people are just like, oh, hey, and here's an additional you know, piece of information. And you just, you soak it all up. Neil deGrasse Tyson can be, you know, kind of, you know, Neil deGrasse Tyson sometimes. But he did say something once that I really liked is just like, when you get something wrong, it's better than getting something right. Because if you get something wrong and you know you're wrong and you know what the right answer is, you've now learned something. That's not something the person who's always right can say. But that does make sense that microwaves could bounce around the inside of the microwave and go back and cook your electronics. Uh, but I'd be more, honestly more worried about, uh, you know, exploding pasta, you know, pasta sauce or you know, chicken fat or stuff like that, that that tends to splatter. Even if you've got a paper towel, it could, it could get through there and, and uh, electronics don't like that kind of stuff. Wooden frames with holes at the end of a slide. Some of this stuff reads like riddles. Um, oh, that looks cool. Slicer? Maybe? No, maybe a slicer. It looks like it's supposed to roll. This looks like... A this looks like a really cool marble puzzle. Uh, I got no idea what we got from the comments. From Alabama, and three of them? I'm going to guess it was used in some way for tobacco. Oh, putting a bundle through the hole and lop off, yes, the, the stems and tie them up. I can't see a way to use it for cotton. Yeah, no, that, that's, that makes much more sense. What are these smaller doors inside our hotel bathroom door? How old is that? Okay, I'm, I'm taking a wild guess here, but I there used to be sort of ventilation, quote unquote ventilation systems in, in, ho in homes that were built without air conditioning where you could open a lower door to let in cooler air. Uh, when it was hot or if it was, you know, in the winter, you could open an upper upper door to let in warm air while still having, you know, some privacy. Uh, outside of that, there's also attendant style doors, but I don't, I don't think that is what this is, but let's see here. Uh, while many are saying Dutch door, uh, this is actually called a wicket. A Dutch door has a separate top and bottom half. Yeah, that's like the attendant doors open together independently. A wicket is a door or two in this case inside of a door. They're used mainly in psych ward as a way to get into a room that may be barricaded. Never mind. Yeah, I guess the top one isn't all the way to the top. But yeah, if if in in some older homes, New England area, I've seen a few of the, these. Sometimes you'll see them over the top of the door frame and stuff like that to uh to let airflow pass through while still having privacy. But uh, now you know where your hotel what your hotel used to be. Although that doesn't really look like built out or super durable. I'm not sure. Small fragment. Cuboid from Morocco thought thinking it was soap. Is it solid? Is it like, I need more information on this. Like marble or something? Let's see here. It might just be solid perfume. Huh, you just rub it on your skin. This, or leave in your car as air freshener. Huh, I, I, yeah, I guess it's just like really, you know, hyper fragrant deodorant without the actual deodorizing effect. I'm curious. Now I want to smell it. Solid metal removable spike in a New York hotel bathroom. Ah, uh, uh, <laughs> that, that, that's a, that's a murder weapon. Um, drain stop? <laughs> Oh, I am so curious now. Vase for a single flower? Oh, that'd be pretty. Uh, okay, okay, bud vase. Makes sense to have it removable so you can dump it out and refill with water. They have it built in? Also a theft deterrent, since it's not very useful as a bud vase if you don't have a hole for your table. Oh, I'm curious as to why they designed it so that it could be used as a very effective weapon. <laughs> yes! It doesn't need to be so darn pointy. Yeah, no, you could just make it uneven. Like you could slope it and have a sloped base and put the, I don't know, but I've also seen stuff that's used in decoration of New York hotels that, that look like a danger to the occupant. There's a bunch of pictures in the Edison Hotel lobby. Uh, like they're like Polaroids framed in glass with binder clips just hanging above you. And I'm sure they're glued or something like that, but they just, you just look up and see a bunch of panes of, you know, frame glass, which is just shatters into billions of pieces. And you just move a little to the right. What is this ceramic device 
that is big enough to hold a bar of soap. It has a rectangle hole that goes through the bottom. It was located next to the bathroom items like toothbrush holder and liquid soap dispenser. The parts around the rectangle hole seem to form stairs, not just flat space between. Uh, that actually looks like a dispenser of some sort. It looks like they're out of something that would normally be there, like tissues or something like that. I don't know. Uh, let's see here. It's an old holder for a cell phone while you were charging it. Flip phones would sit in it like a chair and the plug went through the bottom. Really? This must have been rich people stuff because it like, was not something I, I ever saw. The way the phone sits in it in the product photo is unsettling. Yeah, I agree. I, I'm, I, I, I think this is for like a different kind of phone, like the uh, StarTech, I think, or for, I forget, the, the, you know, the ones from the 90s shows. I don't think for, they're for the the newer Gallic, like, you know, touchscreen phones. Older Blackberries, brick phones, Nokia, stuff like that. What is this fan-looking spinner thing? Are those LEDs on the edges? That, uh, I can't tell. There are some of these that, that light up with, like, letters and stuff, but, uh, I don't think those are LEDs. I think this is just, like, a very floppy fan. Uh, let's see what we got. Two keep flies off food. I have several. Great for dining outside, as your hand can easily stop the blades to reach under them. Oh, okay, so it does actually spin. It's like a fan, but just with really heavy floppy blades. Just really annoying for flies. I like that. That's one of the reasons I don't like eating outside in picnics is bugs. Two steps found at every playground in town. For accessibility? Yeah, I'm going with accessibility on this. This looks like the right height for possibly moving in and out of motion assistive stuff. Um, Especially with the grab handles. Yeah, that's that's definitely for, for something. Let's see what we got. Uh, a stop on an exercise circuit. Huh? There there may be other cardio type apparatuses within a hundred yards or so. No, it's for handicapped accessibility. Ah, step tests are a single step and don't use rails. Yeah, the, that was what I think. I was like, you could kind of do it for aerobics, but the, the handrails could be a trip hazard if you're using it for that. Uh, there's a link. I'm looking at an image of that link, so I'm... Not going to click on it, but uh, but yeah, I, I I appreciate it. You're right, and thank you. This is like the good side of the internet. I love this. What is this tube that this Coast Guard guy sticks his gun into while loading it? Uh huh. I wonder if he keeps it dry or, or it prevents accidental discharge because like he's on a dock right now, but like they might be at sea. I'm curious. Let's see what we've got. In the army, we called it a cleaning station. Oh, clearing station. Oh, yeah. If you were to have an unintended discharge, there we go. While clearing the weapon, that chamber would stop the bullet. Yep. 100% a clearing barrel. And like that other dude said, you are, uh, <clears throat> fracked if you have a non-intentional discharge into one. Saw a dude get an article 15 for putting a blank into one. All right, are you saying you'll get into trouble if you like intent, like if you use it as a trigger checker? <laughs> Like instead of clearing the, uh, the clearing a weapon is making sure that there's not a round in the chamber. So uh, if you if you have a round in the chamber, the the gun is considered dangerous. Uh, but uh, the kind of safety maxim uh, for handling firearms is every gun is always loaded, especially the one you just cleared. Just kind of getting you into the mentality of every gun is always you know loaded. But to to clear a chamber, you pull the slide back and you can look down and you will see whether or not there's a round in the chamber. I'm not sure what ND means. Maybe it means something else. Uh, I would assume that if you're at sea or if this is like on a boat and you're swinging around and you accidentally fire into one because you're on a boat and things are swinging around, you should, wouldn't get in trouble. But I, I don't know. <laughs> Because the first guy said it was while it was loading. I don't know. I'm really curious about this now. Bought a jean jacket at Target. Then felt a ball of some kind sewn into the lining. Cut the lining and found this really lightweight, velvety soft ball with a slight groove in the top third that I couldn't crush in my hand. What is that? Whoa, it looks like aerogel almost. I think I see a square outline, square, like a ridge. I see where that top third you were talking about. Uh, that could be an antenna for anti-theft, uh, for inventory control, uh, because all you technically need is a wire that vibrates at a specific frequency, but let, let's see over here. Humus stone for your stone wash jeans. Probably wasn't supposed to go home with you. Oh, it's definitely not humus stone, and I have a hard time imagining it being used for the brace of properties, unless it's at the end of its life and worn smooth. I have one of those doesn't really, really, the outside feels very soft. And while it's a solid object that I can't crush with my hand, it does give a very slight squish. Not pumice, poop pumice, uh, but a foam alternative to pumice uh, for the stone wash process. Oh, there are countless of materials used to achieve varying levels of effect. 
Oh, very cool. A closed glass cylinder filled with a clear liquid. <laughs> I swear some of these sound like riddles. 20 centimeters long, four centimeters wide. Found at the bottom of a lake in Stockholm. <laughs> this, this, this was the right one to pull the voice out for. <laughs> it was overgrown with algae on the outside. Nothing grows on the inside, so the liquid is not water. No markings, it is straight, and the bubble is too big to come from a spirit level. Oh, that is weird looking. What, what is that? You said it was glass? Ah, uh, yeah, the top looks like, sorry, the bottom of that is usually where the top is. That usually it's sealed off by, by heat. Uh, let's see, I suspect it is a storm glass. Yep, I have one that is almost identical to this over years, and particularly if shaken, the liquid inside will become slightly cloudy and with a yellowish tinge. The point at the end is to hold it in a wooden ba base, which would normally be carved to fit it. It even looks like there are some possible black flecks that could have been writing. They will often have instructions on how to read them printed on the glass. Okay, I, I, I've heard of these, but I've never actually seen one. Uh, according to Wikipedia, it's uh, camphor, nitrate of potassium, and sal... Uh, Oh my god. Stuff I can't pronounce dissolved by alcohol with water, which is why it looks kind of kind of like a, a spirit level, but not quite. Apparently they have a roughly 50-50 chance of being correct, but they're basically a simplified barometer uh, and will will let you know if it are supposed to let you know if a storm is coming, which to a certain extent can be true. Like if you get a, a low pressure, usually that's a sign that, that a front can be coming through and uh, usually you get bad storms around that, but you know, that's not always the case. Bought a house with this glass structure in the backyard. No idea what it's supposed to be. That looks like a bird habitat, maybe. It'd be really hot. A vertical greenhouse or something? Or for a snake. Oh, it might be for a snake, because this, then it'd be warm and stuff. I don't know, let's see. It's to grow mushrooms. Oh, it was outdoor, outdoor greens. It's called, called a fruiting house. It looks like there is even substrate there that you use in growing mushrooms. Oh, there you go. Yellowish powder on the inside of swimming suit. That looks like the foot or the neoprene starting to, to break down. I think chlorine can do that. There's also types of spandex that will, uh, that will are basically just a bunch of tiny little fibers and they will break and begin to pill and sort of ravel upwards almost. Uh, you can see it if you like accidentally uh, run hose or like tights past Velcro. It does a number on them. It does kind of like this. And uh, let's see what the answer is. The stretchy part of the fabric is degrading. Yay. N not good, but but I was right. <laughs> and poking through. Can't be fixed. Uh, time for a new swimsuit. Hey, go shopping now. They're probably on clearance. This is about three feet tall. Tall, I'm guessing? Uh, made of solid wood. It doesn't weigh much though. Maybe five or 10 pounds. The arm hanging down swings and the top is just a handle. It does not move. What in the... Okay, definitely hold on to the two handles and and do something close to the ground. A pipe or something? No, that wouldn't be strong enough. What is it? Boot puller. Dang it, I knew this one. Most elaborate boot puller I have seen, but a boot puller nonetheless. Is that like for boot stretching or hang on, I gotta look this up. Because pulling my boot is like, oh, it's oh, oh it's to pull the boot off. Oh, oh, oh so, so as not to damage the tip of the other boot. Oh, I'm just really hard in my boots and I just go at it. That being said, like I either wear combat boots that can put up with that or nearly knee high like goth boots with a bunch of buckles and stuff that uh, you're not gonna get those off without undoing the zippers. Heavy object, about 10 kilograms, 35 centimeters tall, 25 centimeters wide at top side. Found in the Netherlands. That that looks like the world's most cursed tanning bed. Are those actually mirrors or are they just super shiny? I can't tell. The only other thing I can think of would be like sundial, not sundial, but like light reflector of some sort, but we got an answer. Let's see what we got. I have one just like this at work. It's very old and meant to use in production photography. Ah, so lighting for printing works. With this tool, you can make a readable negative for use in printing instead of an unreadable negative a camera normally would produce, if that makes sense. So so a, 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 a more detailed or clear negative? I have failed to find uh, the proper English term for it, but in Dutch, it's called a Dachkant Spiegel. They were very expensive since they needed to be aligned perfectly. Yeah, I thought there was something up with the alignment, but just for fun, you can look into the center of the mirrors. Just for fun, uh, you can look into the center of the mirrors and see yourself like others see you. The image is flipped. Oh, pro product photography, not production photography. 
I understand the meaning now. So this is for taking pictures of products. This is this is very early. Uh, instead of I'm going to take a picture of my item to put up on eBay, I'm going to take a picture of my item to put in the newspaper. What are these small bowls with holes in the bottom? I have no idea what to do with them. Are they all the same size or are they slightly? They almost look like glass harmonica uh, notes or ceramic insulators, but uh, they look like uh, pots you would put succulents in to me. Solved. Now I have to convince my husband to buy me uh, 12 succulents. <laughs> I mean, this this was an excellent like gambit. If you wanted succulents, you'd be like, well, I already have the, I have the pots. Metal studs in exterior, straight facing walls seen all over Geneva, Switzerland. Example in photo. They are about four to five inches from the ground, tapered towards the wall. Styles differ a little. Some have flatter ends. Or, oh, maybe for like enforcement, like it, it's the end of a bar or something. It seems really deep into the wall, though. I was here with a, the, a surveyor from Germany here. These are used for height measurements, so-called leveling. A leveling rod is placed on top of these metal studs, which have a defined height. Ah, using an optical level, you can determine height differences. Retired Texas surveyor here, we call it a benchmark. Hadn't seen one like that. Neat stuff. Very cool. I would have never thought of that unless I'd seen like a bunch of them all kind of around the same height. Mother-in-law left this behind after a move. It was plastic wrapped, never used. It has a mesh cover, small holes, and a plunger that presses into neither of them. Wife and I are very confused. It, it's it's like the, the world's smallest like juicer. We need a banana for scale. But you know, it looks kind of like a juice juicer for like a very tiny lemon or garlic or something. Amazon.com something something. Strainer, ah, reusable built injector. What? Solved. Also, she paid $37 for this plastic crap? That's crazy. So I, I had to look this up because I, I just got too curious. Uh, it's a tea strainer. Uh, also, the $37 for two of them, which explains why there was one that was uh, that was not used and still in the plastic wrap. Unlocks every layer of aroma and flavor. Uh, this isn't sponsored. I, I think it's stupid expensive too. But apparently it's, it's designed so that tea leaves float around inside of it. And yeah, the plunger just forces all of the leaves or whatever you have in, inside of it. It's apparently also works with some fruits and things like that uh, all the way to the bottom. Anybody know what car this is off of? Need help figuring out who or what hit my car last night. What car? Well, we know it's a Ford, right? Other than that, can't help you, friend. Oh, here we go. This guy can. Ford Focus Hatchback RH Bumper Reflector. Check the link's last picture, and pardon, it's the LH, but you will see it's just reversed. Edit. So many asking how this was solved. Car guy here. OP narrowed this down quite a bit considering we know it's a Ford part. Reflectors are semi-standard on small cars, hatchbacks, and small SUVs nowadays. <laughs> Walked outside to my son's Ford Fiesta to check the shape. Close, but no cigar. On a hunch, I just started looking at the next model up, the Focus. Needless to say, mystery solved. Well, what do you know? We need more people like him in the world. Compartment and ceiling above fireplace with three large hooks and a hole suggesting a missing fourth. Hmm, I don't know about that. My grandma had this. She had hooks across the room to hook lines to and hang up wet laundry in the winter. She also used it to dry herbs and stuff. Check across the room for signs of other hooks. Oh, that's actually kind of neat. A sign of the times, if I've ever seen one. Small gold handheld container for matches? Ooh, it's really pretty. Needle case. Okay, that makes a little bit more sense, I'd say, though. We don't usually need to store matches in fancy containers. They come in boxes good enough on their own. Yellow slash orange plastic. Semi-circular object found in my co-worker's dog's stomach just removed during surgery. Approximately one by two inches long? Any ideas? This is the only photo I have. No other angles, unfortunately. That does look familiar, but I can't quite pinpoint it. When you buy a pre-roasted chicken from the grocery store, this little thing holds the legs tightly together. Oh, <laughs> so he got your Costco rotisserie chicken and went to town? Old concrete structure in the middle of the jungle in Oahu, Hawaii. Door is boarded up, and there's an antenna on top. There's an old radio tower on the top of a nearby mountain, about five miles from the location. So maybe it has something to do with that? Huh. 
Let's see. I like the leaf printing. Almost like someone took some leaves, spray painted over them, and stenciled them to whatever this is. Look up Army Corps of Engineer FUDS maps and see if you're near one. USACE maintains a free public mapping product containing all former U.S. defense sites that the military abandoned prior to the mid-1980s. The list is to keep track of cleanup and environmental restoration projects as funding becomes available, and there's a bunch of them on Oahu. It sounds kind of like you found an old radio communications bunker, which would be very low priority to clean up. If you're on a FUD site, it's worth checking out what the risk associated with that site is, and please be aware there are plenty of former military training grounds there where you might find live munitions. Do take care of yourself. Yeah, if you're gonna go wandering around, do your best to know where you are wandering. It clamps together like it's supposed to grab onto something, opens up to about a 45 degree angle, and has a level on a swivel. What is this thing? Um, that is a very excellent question. Hmm, let's see if Reddit figured this out. Apparently, it's to help cut your bangs, fringe, perfectly level. I wonder how you make sure it's on straight? That's what it's for? Man, your hair better be banging if you use this. Wand-like thing found in the woods. Oh, a wand-like thing? You mean a wand? Come on, think about it. It's part of a turkey call. Edit. Specifically, it is called a striker. Ah, a turkey call. How interesting. Found this small plastic thing in my car. Thought it could be a paper folding tool, but it doesn't look quite right. Any ideas? Um, well, I I'm gonna be useless for most of these. That's why we have the Reddit detectives. Kind of looks like a razor handle. Just, it's absolutely not. Dash trim removal tool. Could have been left by a mechanic, window tint shop, etc. Also, identical to a tool that comes with new bicycle inner tubes that aids in installation. Way more boring than I thought. Although to be fair, most of this is gonna be. Found a rock on the porch of my new home. Flipped it over and saw this. Is that a fossil? I live in Southwest Pennsylvania and fossils are very common, but I'm not certain it is one. Looks almost like a chain link fence impression, but it's part of the rock. I mean, that kind of looks like a scale set. A scale set? It looks like scales, kind of. Maybe a dragon. Yep, that's a fossil. Tree trunk impression. Oh, I was hoping it was gonna be a dragon. Oh well, whatever. I commute to work and the guy in front of me put this up. While this was up, he was watching something on his phone and had headphones on. At one moment on the phone in the suitcase, it seemed to turn on, displaying the Samsung Galaxy symbol. Nothing more happened. What in the world? Is this some kind of just a cell phone testing device where it just makes sense to have it in some goofy suitcase? It's a drive testing kit used by companies like Ofcom and Root Metrics in the UK to test the coverage claims of mobile network operators. Train lines are often hard to cover due to geographic landscaping. Yep, this is it. I used to work for a company doing something similar to this. Hmm. All right, okay. What are these ping pong ball looking things in this video of Canadian smoke jumpers at the wildfires in Quebec? Smoke jumpers? That's a term I like, that's fun. Also, yeah, they kind of look like little smoke bombs. You know, the ones that you light in the street on 4th of July? Delayed aerial ignition device. These are chemical balls that ignite materials on the ground for a controlled burn scenario. The goal is to eliminate the fuel that's feeding the wildfires. They never get paid enough. They really don't. What's this small wooden box outside this house? Pipes lead into wall and around the corner wall, located in the UK. Oh, that's, that's the forever box. If you're really bad, you go in there. Looks like a mains gas connection, usually made of polycarbonate, so may only look like wood unless there are wooden ones in use now. That'll be it. Thanks very much. Solved. We need like a big stamp effect, you know, solved. Okay, I know it's a chair, but what's with the extended arms? Uh, yeah, I'm at a loss on that one too. This is the type of thing I would buy and show off one time and then probably donate it again. Yeah, I'll, I'll lose the money on that just for the story. It looks like a plantation slash planter's chair. You'd put your sore, swollen legs up on the arms after sitting on a horse all day, like a pregnant woman with her legs up in the same fashion. This is why the back is sloped as well. If you sit straight up, it wouldn't be comfortable to put your legs up like that. But in a reclined position, it's good for blood flow and airflow. Ah, <laughs> it's the Gooch Cooler. Small metal box and bracket plugged in a 1960s era house. Has wires coming out of the bottom. Ooh. I just don't like how old it looks. Whenever I see outlets that have a design like that, 
I guess we would say, Art Deco. Just feels like it's gonna blow up. That is a power transformer for providing power to older telephones to light up the dials. It was usually wired to the black and yellow wires of the four-wire telephone cord. Like I said, man, old stuff. I don't trust it. That thing looks like a fire hazard. Growing from the basement ceiling at a very rapid rate. It's also leaving on the table below it grayish particles. Hmm. Oh, is that a fungus? Ooh, that definitely feels like fungi. Ooh, that is... That does not feel good to me, man. Also, those masks on the wall are goddamn scary. You need to leave this place immediately. Those are studs from your walls, redistributed by your ter termites. Oh, 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 no. Oh, that's not what you want to hear either. What's worse, a mushroom taking over your home or termites? Round metal object, 1.5 centimeters in diameter, 1 centimeter in height, glued to a metal sliding door to my retail shop in the middle of the night. Looks kind of like a little button battery almost. It definitely can't be, but it does look like one. Security patrol check-in point. Guards doing patrol have to tap in at these locations to prove they did their patrol. I had my business park security stick one to my aluminum office door frame without permission in the middle of the night, like you. Interesting. I always wondered about that. Could you just not patrol? Well, I guess not. I found this ring in my backyard while doing gardening. After cleaning it, it doesn't look like a normal ring. Any ideas? Oh yeah, that looks incredibly fancy. I... is that IHP? Kinda looks like it. It's a Gregorian slash early Victorian morning ring. The initials belong to the lost loved one. Oh. These were typically made from gold, 18 karat plus, and enameled in black. Yours looks like it was made around 1820s through the 1840s. I know it wouldn't be worth much, but that's kind of neat though. You just found a real golden ring, more than likely. Little house with jail cell windows and a chimney in the middle of a river. Huh. You know, I have seen something like this before. Not in person though. I think it was, might even have been a video game or running around on Google Maps or something like that. Ah, overflow drain inlet. That makes sense. See, a lot of these are just going to end up making sense. And that's it. Clay hands and rods with holes and some string in them. Found buried in an old pot. Hmm. I don't like that one at all. It's common for gardeners to place broken pottery, old pots, at the bottom of their planters to promote drainage. This doesn't actually help plants. Maybe these were some homemade craft that was discarded and used as pot filler, since it looks like terracotta or some kind of unglazed stoneware. Metal star, about five inches in diameter, embedded in a small wood round, in a small wood round? Found in the Willamette National Forest of Oregon in a remote campsite. Ooh, it's just a cookie cutter, but for trees, what's the problem? <laughs> yeah, oh, okay, come on. Not a cookie cutter. They help keep wood posts and telephone poles from splitting. Oh, how does that help? I mean, look, I'm dumb. I'm allowed to ask questions. It is cool, though. I mean, look at that. You shove Patrick into a telephone pole and it helps it from splitting. House on my running route partially sunken into the ground. What the hell? Are they okay? They're not stuck in there, are they? Just a guess, but maybe built during the 70s energy crisis. A home near where I grew up was built with a berm around it, and most of it to save on heating and cooling. Does it help? Does it really make any difference at all? I mean, I know that like when you go into a basement, it's generally the coolest place in the house. You know, the cold air likes to sink and finds the bottom. I get it. But does how much does this help? I am super curious. Weird fish found in garden after storm. All right, how weird are we talking? Oh my god, that is a lot weirder than I was expecting. It's so vibrant. It's like you pulled some kind of weird vegetable from the ground that's angry. This is a short-spined sea scorpion. So horrifying. Yeah, okay, that's fantastic. Carved tusks seem to be ivory. Not much else going on besides the pictures. Or to go on, excuse me, I can't read. That is neat. Uh, I don't like it, though. Hello. These are definitely instruments. Both are the top parts of stringed harps, such as Mangbetu harp. I know I didn't say that correctly. The holes are where the pegs go. You can see that the bottom looks broken or unfinished because it's missing the large bottom resonation piece that was covered in some sort of animal skin, snake skin, antelope skin, or other. Most of these instruments have five to eight to 10 holes where the pegs go and where the strings attach and run down to the base of the resonating body. Oh, now I wish they were complete. That'd be really cool to see. Black plastic rivets found in a shed. They look like they belong to a modeling kit. They're either plugs or spigots for irrigation drip lines. Edit. Can't see the ends, so if they don't have a hole, they're for plugging the end of a small drip line. Example. Solved. No holes, so they're plugs. Thank you. Can anyone identify these shoes? It would help me catch my bike thief. 
I heard Reddit can do some magic. Ooh, okay, I wouldn't be able to do this. Let's see. Let's see if the detectives got it right. Looks like the soul of a Nike Air Relentless 6 trainer. I own a pair myself. <laughs> oh, Reddit, you've done it again. Hey, look at them. They're not that bad, quite stylish. I've been needing a new pair of trainers. Hmm, how do these people do this? Found while clearing yard. Weighs about six pounds. Area has World War II history. Should I call EOD? Mm -hmm. EOD here. That's definitely UXO. Everyone had the right answer. Call emergency services. Furthermore, when you... When you people find stuff that looks suspect, just call it in. We're bored. <laughs> I don't like his flair. Strange building in the middle of nowhere in England. Has two antennas on one side, and then two, possibly three, looks like there might be a third one on the opposite side of the road. Large black circular structure on the walls. The, the, the latitude and longitude? Good God, those are so specific. Let's see. <clears throat> yes, the latitude and longitude are 54.242748258767877 uh, by negative 1.7337911545953653 that is a really creepy looking building, though. It's an abandoned microwave relay station. A what? Can I cook my Hot Pockets there? Strange tower made out of storage containers on a construction site. Has doors in the middle and also a roof hatch. The inside is lighted with lamps. Damn, they really did just straight up create a tower out of them, didn't they? Hey, I work for the company that has this installed right now. This is a vertical take-up unit for the conveyor belts that run in the tunnel. As the tunnel boring machine mines, the belt that removes the mined material has to get longer. The tower stores the belt, and once it's all used up, we add another spool and splice it together. Seven inches heavy for its size, metallic, no identifying marks on it or the case, solid, just metal, it's very smooth. Huh. Look up Muscle Scraper. This looks very similar to a tool my PT uses. It looks like a Graston tool used in physical therapy to break up muscle knots. Source, I've had these used on me many times. Also available on Amazon. I don't like the term muscle scraper. Please don't say that again. Small trailer with individual openings. Seen while driving. No obvious marking that would indicate what it's for. Huh, that is suspect. I think it's for transporting racing pigeons. No way. What are these weird spoons supposed to be used for? Um, the fancy guests. Left is a vintage jelly spoon. The right, I think, is just a fancy mixing spoon for drinks, but I could be wrong with that one. A jelly spoon? Man. These tiny wooden steps randomly appeared by the curbs in a residential neighborhood in the Pacific Northwest, mostly near drains. Any ideas? Huh, is it for, I don't know, maybe an animal that needs to be able to escape the flow of the water? I don't know. Pretty sure you guessed correctly. Little steps for wee creatures to get over the curbs. Yeah, I kind of figured it was that. Maybe not in an emergent situation like I was thinking, but still. Contraption found on a hiking trail in Utah made of several flat and round pieces of metal, held together by screws with a thicker hollow part running parallel to the longest metal strip. I wouldn't even care what that is. Looks like a wagon brake. Ah, how interesting. I found this blue disc in a packet of sour cream crisps. It has the words Ferris 25mm BST cert number blah 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 on it. Hmm, some sort of testing puck, right? Yeah, a testing chip. It goes through the metal detectors to ensure they're working. There's a problem here, though. You send X number of testers, you get X number back. If you get X-1 or some other number, you stop the line until you find your chip. The entire purpose of the test is to make sure that stuff like this, which is supposed to simulate a foreign object, doesn't get through. There's usually paperwork to document this. Write to the outfit and tell them what you found, and rest assured there'll be a crap storm on the other end, and maybe infinite free chips. Structure at the rental house. It has two posts that have three holes connected with a thin opening. It has a tin roof. Located in the backyard on a rock bed, there is a gate nearby. Doesn't seem all that weird. Looks like a barn swallow manor. The holes on the side are just to make the structure look nicer. What's a barn swallow manor? Those words together make no sense to me. It's a multiple birdhouse specifically for barn swallows. Ah, I could have figured that out. What are these hard flecks appearing in my bedding from time to time? Yeah, it's grody, dude. Looks like melted plastic or melted fibers from being overheated in the dryer. Try checking your loads in between taking from washer and putting in the dryer. I suspect it's fabric piling and loose elastic melting into hard plastic. Maybe try a lower heat setting. I like this theory very much. It makes complete sense. Given the setting and the fact that I almost burn my hands when getting stuff out of the dryer I use, now I can say this. It does look like flecks are ingrained in the gray duvet in the pictures. 
Yeah, I've accidentally melted a hole in my blanket before. I don't like that I can say that. I don't like that my blanket's made of goddamn plastic, but what are you gonna do? I found this thing in my food. It was just stuck to a piece of meat. It wasn't lodged into it or anything. Anyone know what it is? Uh, meat tracker. Whatever you ate, you can assume did not come from premium parts of the animal. What type of meat was it found in? Blech, I don't like it. Just bought a house, found this hidden inside the front bushes. Screws in a wooden ball. It looks like a mace. What was or is this used for? Ah, oh, how generous the previous occupants have donated to you a tool for the zombie apocalypse slash Jehovah's Witnesses. Over 15% more effective than boiling oil. But no, according to Hannah and Volpine, it's possibly a sculpture of a dandelion? Wondering if the other end looks dirty like it's been stuck in the earth. And after doing their own due diligence like an idiotic, critically analyzing human being capable of self-thought and self-reflection, you <laughs> loser! Uh, yes, there's a literal link to what this is. A DIY allium flowers out of recycled metal and other scrap. And look at that. Achieving that medieval weaponry hashtag aesthetic. aesthetic. Now don't fear about the difficulty that is turning trash and junk into decent pieces of artwork. It's its not that hard. Uh, my sister does it all the time with her face. Found at Nan's house. Glass vase with metal grill inside. Place your bets, humans. We've got literally the two things they described. My vote is something to do with paintbrushes maybe to keep them in place or even like an ashtray in a really dumb way though. <laughs> well, if you guess those things, you're wrong! It's actually an arranging cut flowers thingy. A rose bowl. I tried googling this to verify and all I came across was some lame stadium. So, in in my opinion, Sir Jahil here is a liar and should not be trusted. Clearly a secret spy planted to advertise some stupid place in Pasadena, California. Found in a strawberry filled donut, very hard plastic, it's not hollow, about the size of a thumbnail. In, a, in, in food? A solid chunk of plastic in food, okay. This is triggering the PTSD of needles being in strawberries here in Australia. You know, to me it looks like it's been broken off, but also like it's a tube to squirt jam through? But how do you break off a piece like that? Other comments are similar to theorize this. It's the tip of the device they use to squirt the jelly filling in the donut that's broken off. And after some debate, they realize, okay, yeah, they might be right, though whatever they Google are metal ones. So they see what they mean. Uh, they just thought initially, but not being sure, and yes, well, this seems to be a great example as to why they're actually on metal, because the plastic ones keep breaking off, <laughs> as we've now experienced. What are these compartments for on this bottle opener? Well, clearly they define when you should stop and go. <laughs> Does no one learn anything in driving school? See, and you take them off when you want to just stop and go whenever you like. <laughs> Yeah, that's my justification. I believe they're extra bottle caps so you can recap your drink. Oh, I, okay, actually, that is genius. Why is this not more common? Imagine all the spiking you could feel so much more safer about by having, like, just caps you could carry around. Finally, a tool that could help me drink my three liter bottle of vodka in peace. What is this rectangle filled with orange jelly goo with an oval metal thing floating through it? Phone case. Soap. Uh... What? Why? <laughs> An eldritch horror. Looks like a hand warmer. A hand warmer? That, what? Flex the disc to activate it. Once it's been used, you can boil it back to a liquid to reuse it. Interesting. I guess being a creature that produces sweat like Niagara Falls in my hands sometimes, I, I never really realized such a thing was a product. Weird heavy metal oval rounded keychain. Stays in the palm of hand, nothing is written on it. It's not electronic, does not move, does not light up, does not make noise. It's a mystery! Please help. Hmm. Uh, I'm gonna ask you something and I don't want you to make any assumptions as to why I'm asking this, but does it have a smell? Oh no, are you ready for this? Are you ready for what it is, apparently? Plug up those remaining theories, cause turns out it's for washing your hands with. If you don't have any soap, Great after chopping garlic, onions, or fish. Search for stainless steel soap. No, at this point you're trolling. There, there's no way stainless steel soap exists. What? It exists? How does that work? It's, it's just hard, shiny rock. Humans, stop this. This is beyond science. This is magic and I don't like it because I don't understand it. Okay, no, to clarify, it doesn't like wash your hands. It just removes the smell from your hands. Apparently, metal soap works because of the chemistry between certain foods and stainless steel. Odors from certain things contain sulfur molecules, which are transferred to your skin when cooking. Stainless steel binds these molecules 
shifting them from your skin to the bar. That's right, you wash your hands with the power of magnetism. God damn, this world's really cool when you actually get into the gritty details of it. Smell fresh with the power of magnetism. Found this while digging in the Paris, France region. It looks like copper and is 13 centimeters long. Yeah, okay, I'm confident this isn't a b this time. I'm 70% confident this isn't a b this time. Looks like a spear tip. Ask your local museum and try not to disturb and try not to disturb the area more than I've screwed up this comment. The surrounding of artifacts is what makes them meaningful. What are these tiny pockets for? There is one on each shoulder of this sweater. I've heard of these, therefore smuggling geckos into music festivals. Since a lot of geckos detach their tail as a way of escaping, a lot of people will then, you know, use those tails for recreational drug use. It's a bit weird. Also made up and completely lying. <laughs> this shirt allows the wearer to clip a radio mic to those little pockets so it doesn't have to be clipped to the lapel or collar. That is so interesting that such a weirdly specific profession would utilize this. Like, it's not just general use, it's like for a particular sort of career, I suppose. Assuming this is a product of clothing someone can buy from any sort of store and not just a particular clothing brand. Bought a pack of Newports, found this device inside encased in pink foam, a jumble of electronic stuff and a bit that says wireless charger. What would it charge? Incredible. As in, that looks incredibly dodgy. Like, it looks like some sort of makeshift thing you'd use to distract some border patrol people when you're smuggling in drugs. Which is kind of funny, because I'm close in the criminality theory, because it's a GPS tracker. Stores will have packs of Newports that have trackers in them. They are supposed to give them to robbers. Just bring it back to the store. So, <laughs> either they just screwed up the order, or they, <laughs> they're kind of racist about you. They, they, they they think you're someone who's a bit sus and can't be trusted. Found this metal structure in the Italian Alps near Marmolada. It was about three meters tall and we saw a few of these on the side of the mountain. Any idea what are these and their purpose? Yeah, this is how they did battle royales back in the day. So someone was up here at the top of the hill measuring the circle and a friend was next to them with a uh, speakerphone shouting, Maurice, <laughs> Maurice Micklewhite, you are out of the circle. Please henceforth venture into the perimeter. Thank you. No. Sir, I think he's emoting in your direction. <laughs> mm, what emote is it? The finger waggle, sir. <laughs> How dare you, sir? I did that to your mother! I think it's a mounting system for an avalanche control device called a bilks. Okay, I was too curious and I had to Google this. And this is awesome. This is amazing, actually. So essentially, this is just a chair. A helicopter will fly over like this human-sized egg, place it on this thing, to which this device can then wirelessly uh, check wind speed, air temperature, all these sort of stats, and has some sort of like air pressure cannon underneath it that when they need to, they fire it, which causes a slight avalanche to happen and therefore control possible avalanches ever coming out of control in the future. Similar to what's kind of happening in Sydney right now. Doing a lot of controlled burning for the inevitable uh, fire season ahead of us, which, <laughs> as I've been told, is apparently going to be a fun one. So look forward to 2020 Part 2, Electric Boogaloo of Australian Wildfires. Found a box with four metal pieces and a big piece of wax inside. It had a note in it too, but I can't read it. Oh, okay, they look like teeth. I am immediately going to wash my hands if I ever touch these. And going by all this handwriting, I would have to say this person um, can write. That's my best guess. Yes, I am Sherlock Holmes. People think they kind of look like teeth. All my photo translator can read is one cam, two ugt, one sheep, one horse, two convict, two the horse. Maybe animal teeth? No, sheep bones. It is a Mongolian game, apparently, probably from a gift shop, because in a real game, you would have several dozen, but they sell gift sets like this. Okay, Teacher Boo Boo, you can't just say it's a game and all this other information and not give more. What are you? Like an AI YouTube channel posting part one of a movie and not showing any other parts on your channel? What's the game, man? Come on! Red waxy substance found in or around the keyhole of the lock on my front door. Yeah, my mind's immediately going to attempted break-in or attempt at trying to create a copy of your key. Survey says, So this happened one time when I was flipping houses for a dude. Went to unlock the door and noticed something covering the lock that looked like white lipstick. 
I looked around and the other houses had it too. I called Crime Check and they said it had been used as a method by squatters and burglars to see who on the block is using their key or even if there might be empty homes. Like how people sometimes go door to door pretending to sell solar panels, window replacements, or landscaping services so they can see who answers in the middle of the day. They do that? I... Oh, I was a very oblivious kid. A bit of an eye-opening phone call for me, lol. No, seriously, I, <laughs> I used to always answer in the middle of the day. Oh, no. I... <laughs> There were people who were selling the weirdest and most useless stuff that, yeah, you, you on reflection, they definitely weren't caring if they made a sale or not. Found today clearing an estate. It weighs 11 pounds, 11 ounces, about 14.25 inches around. It looks to be slightly rusted. No markings. Ah, yes. The ball you use once you want to play handball with your friends, but also you want to crush their toes. Or it's a likely of one of three things. A cannonball from a 12 pounder, a shot put shot was used in a track and field, or a very large ball bearing that was used in some very large pieces of industrial machinery like trains. Now, from what I can tell, it's too big to be a 12 pounder cannonball and the weight is wrong for shot put. So I'm thinking number three is the answer. And as it turns out, that is possibly an answer. I don't actually know. Um, there's no real uh, further verification on that. So we'll just have to take their word. This is a keychain I got from a trip. It is made of plastic and has a distinct shape. And I can't picture what it could be for. What is this thing? Well, it's got to be a map of somewhere. Uh, I'm thinking Westeros. Some further measurements here, along with a <laughs> cute little 2D diagram. <laughs> that is weird that it's got that, like, dent in the middle slash bottom of it. Maybe it's a, a pooper scooper? Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, no, that should be obvious now. Opening soda cans. And beer cans. It's just cans in general. That, um, wow. Yeah. Ah, I feel stupid. <laughs> Strange brittle shards and large thin sheet of crystals found in my trunk. All right, we get it. You're selling crystals. This is not the place to advertise it, sir. Yeah, no idea what it is, but I'd advise against touching unknown substances in the future just to be safe. Nah, it's fine. As we all know, things are only toxic if you have an immediate reaction to it. It's like when someone touches you, but then immediately has an urge to wash their hands. Yeah, my exact first thought too. How does anyone look at that and go, how oh, definitely not some unknown chemical reaction occurred? here. Better grab that with my bare hand. Yeah, this is the second Civic truck I've seen with this stuff on Reddit this year. The consensus has been deaf in both cases, but given that the Civic is not a diesel vehicle and the only cases popping up are Civics, there may be something else going on. Maybe the liner has some flare retardant in it that washes out with long-term condensation cycling. Either way, Crystal What are these massive silverish metal spheres or containers floating near the shore at a ship breaking yard in Bangladesh. Oh, come on. Ships are allowed to have a beach getaway vacation too, so what if they want to play a bit of ball and volleyball on the beach? They've promised they're not going to throw them too hard and topple a few houses. They're good. We're on good terms with them. Looks almost like liquid natural gas containers. Spheria are the ideal pressure tank shape. Yep, probably left over. Wonder if they are made of something special or they are afraid of leftover LNG and don't want to blow themselves up. That's both managed to demystify this and also not explain anything. Like still, look, just look at them in comparison to the buildings around them. I'd say they're half the size of a football field. A circular thing common outside of homes in Hawaii? Um, <laughs> I, I hope it's not so obvious, but a pool? <laughs> uh, maybe a, a rainwater silo too? Looks like a water catchment system. Oh yeah, so I was right, technically, because I said water silo and that's the same thing technically. Also pool, pool's also the same thing, it's just, you know, that you'd make it disgusting if you swam in it, but you can still swim in it, it's just frowned upon. And you know what they say, if they frown at you, just look at them in the eye and keep doing what you're doing. Show them you're the alpha as you wear your floaty rings and drink out of a silly straw. Strange capsules found in a ski area in the Alps. Hey, why? Perfect. We literally just rambled about these earlier. They're the Obelix things, the ones I was actually talking about. Oh, I'm sorry. That's not the, that's the company name. What they're actually called are Avalanche Millig... Avalanche medication pods. They use gas and noise to knock loose snow down the mountain to prevent buildup and avalanches. So let's set the scene. You're a snowboarder slash skier and you get notified that there's going to be some controlled avalanche mitigation activity happening around you. So you decide to, you know, be somewhere safe and just listen out for it to take effect. Ah! 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 
So a white plastic stick that gets narrower in the middle with small hands on both ends given as a wedding favor or gift for guests. What the f- <laughs> I think it's- <laughs> So many, so many stupid possibilities I'm thinking of right now. Like a back scratcher, but it looks so inconvenient as a back scratcher. Maybe for, for tiny clapping, <laughs> you clap with your friends. Maybe for handshakes or high fives if you don't want to actually touch each other. Ah, oh, but no, it's a muddler stick or cocktail swizzle stick. If the, okay, but why make them the design of hands? You know, the thing that people are usually disgusted by doing to their drinks, by putting their hands in them? Like, I feel if you're gonna do that, just commit to it more and just make them look like dog poop. What is this thing? My inner child needs to know. Green and white pendant, I think, of some sort, found in my stocking 18 years ago. Um, I mean, that's jade if I'm recalling my gemstones correctly, which I'm probably definitely not. Uh, I would say it's some sort of Asian um, origin of some kind, and turns out to be a jadeite pendant. Hell yeah, I was 60% correct with the word. With space in it to hold herbs or sandalwood. The word on the back is fu, which means luck. The dragon heads are just common Chinese symbolism, but sometimes there is a bat instead because for the word bat sounds like luck. If it has bamboo symbolism, it's supposed to be stronger. It's usually strung and attached to your belt and carried for luck. Source, my Chinese wife, who also claims that this is not a well-made piece. It's poor quality sculpting and common in antique markets. And you know what? Looking back at the photo, I can see how the details on the left of it are not the same length or shape or size as the details on the right. My Chinese wife also warns that Chinese people do not carry old pieces with unknown history because it might have belonged to someone who died and then it was stolen by grave robbers. And then the amulet could bring bad luck. What is this? I was doing some filling in the yard and found this. My wife says it's a gravestone. I think survey marker. Honestly, looking at that, I would agree to either of you, actually. Of course, these two are a married couple, and unfortunately he is the man thinking survey marker, which makes him immediately incorrect, even factually, sadly. Then, sorry guys, you were just destined to lose. <laughs> Quick look up on Ancestry, a newborn named Jacques L. Ariola. Ariola? Oh no! Oh, someone's last name is Ariola! <laughs> sorry, I know, what, I know what's kind of revealing here that this is a dead baby, um, but... <laughs> <laughs> Ariola? <laughs> Anyway, that person, uh, the baby died and was born on the 24th of July in 1968 in Fresno. Mother's maiden name, Bobst. That's a grave marker. That's right, OP. Congratulations, because you've got, got a dead baby on your property. property. Yeah. What is this strange pocket watch with a lever and odd face? Oh, that's something uncomfortable with the numbers not being where I'm used to them being. Someone fix that. Now! Maybe an old pocket roulette wheel for when gambling was illegal? Which, agreeing to train here, I had no idea these existed, now I want one, they look so cool. That is... <laughs> I mean, look, yeah, people would find a way to do the illegal things when they're illegal. Yeah, it turns out that's what it is, a pocket roulette wheel similar to this image here, modeled to look like a pocket watch for easy concealment, but with a rotating dial instead of an indicator hand. My guess is that it has 12 parts instead of the typical number to look like a broken pocket watch upon inspection. Most likely this one was crafted out of a pocket watch as some of the original frame is visible around the dial, wheel, and face. And upon curiously googling myself, I have instead also come across uh, miniature electric shock roulette toys where you can put in fingers of your friends and press the button and someone's getting shocked. That is scary as hell. I <laughs> don't want it. It's like Russian roulette for kids. What is this hatch in my house? It's the only place to safely escape your art decor. I'm kidding. No, it's nice. It's cute. I like the tigers. But oh, wow. G oh, please clean that. I don't <laughs> don't know what you'd use it for, but just clean it. You know, a house I used to live in had similar hatches. Uh, they were access doors to the chimney for cleaning and inspection. Yeah, I think this is the front runner suggestion. I'll see if a fireplace was below originally and then blocked up once it was removed. These small recesses found all over our house. Hello? Ah, uh, hello, Wall. How are you? Does anyone know why this person keeps taking photos of our mouths? Oh. 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 
No, your walls aren't hungry hippo mouths. There used to be open flame burners that connected to gas as a heat source in the early 1900s before forced air, and sometimes they would be set into the wall like this. And now they are nothing more than a constant reminder that you could add something aesthetic to the space, but you won't because you can't commit to taking care of succulents because you're just that lazy. What is this small blue thing with a button and lights up red when pressed? It's weird, I keep pressing it and just, you know, it's not doing anything. Meanwhile, at the nearby military base. Alert, alert, evacuate the area. I don't know, sir, they keep activating. Alert. I don't know, they turning off and on. Find them and get... Oh, I was close. It's a night owl disposable... <laughs> The uh, most convenient home sleep testing device in the world. What was this small kitchen wall cabinet used for? A uh, house was built in 1931. Uh, looks like just a generic cleaning cupboard to me. Is there a fireplace nearby or a stone oven? I think you're looking for a set of four tools, maybe for grilling or fire tending. Ooh, likely solved. My current guess is that it's to hold tools for either the fireplace thing outside or that there used to be a coal burning stove in the kitchen and it was used for that, or very small guns. <laughs> Thanks! My ex, who I'm in no contact with, left me this gift of my dog. What is this hole on the top? Ah, it's a smoker's pipe. So you smoke through the butthole, um, and you put the tobacco on the top. It totally is that. Trust me, bro. Do it. Go on. It'll be funny. I mean, it's it's what it's used for. No, it's a personalized dog planter for a tiny plant. They sell them on Etsy. You can send in a pic of your dog and they'll create one that looks similar. Oh, and edits, they are also super pricey. Even the 3.5 inch one I saw was $95. It looks like this one might be that size. Damn, that's... Wow. <laughs> well, congratulations on you not needing to reciprocate such a gift. What are these aged four-eyed mustache metal faces found in a late man's lockbox? What? What a... Ooh. Yeah, that's really creepy. Uh... <laughs> I don't like them at all, but I kind of love them. Sendman was born in 1951 and died in 2000. He was born and raised in Rhode Island and moved to Alaska in the 80s. I don't know if it helps, but it does give a timeline. I mentioned where they were found because otherwise I have no idea where they came from. Ah, Google Lens says bottle opener, with double vision because being drunk. One result says double-eyed Pete. Some appear to be painted to look like stereotypical Mexicans and Chinese. This is the answer. They're definitely bottle openers. Why do they have to look so scary? What is the purpose of this little door in the door? Also, does anyone know what this style would be considered? Hmm, the little door in the door. Yeah, it does seem kind of pointless to have that door in the door. It's already a glass door. What is the point of that? Huh, well, let's see if uh, Reddit Sleuth figured this out. To talk to somebody without opening the door? That's what I was thinking at first, but it's not wide enough to really be an entry door. It's called a speakeasy. And yes, it's for talking to someone without having to open the door. I don't know why it just seems kind of pointless. At least to me. I don't know. I'm clearly not the clientele. What is this solid metal object in the wall next to the door? It's located in an old house in the UK and doesn't seem to do anything. Wait, what is that? Hang on. It's like a door stopper. It looks very much like a bell pole that's been painted over. If you scrape the paint of the central knob, I'd expect you to find brass underneath. Solved. I think it is a bell pole. It would make sense. Thanks. Old houses pre-1900s owned by rich people would have had internal bell systems in many rooms so they could summon the help, servants or slaves, to any room. Great. That's cool. What is this thing in a picture of a house for sale in Kauai? Uh, Kauai? I, I don't know what it says. I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce everything. Okay, it looks metal and glass, black, oval-shaped, from floor to ceiling, open to floor, an oval on glass on one side. Wow, I don't know why this is written so poorly, but let's take a look. Okay, is it a pneumatic elevator that will suck me up to the second floor? That is really strange looking though. Looks like a personal elevator. Solved! I thought it was some sort of elevator, but gave up on that because it looked like a solid floor beneath. They probably just matched it somehow. Thank you for solving this. Yeah, elevator? Column of silence? Asked the agent. Wow, thanks for your help there, random third commenter. What is this concrete feature in the parking lot of an old bread factory? Uh, uh, I don't know, but there's something a little weird about that. Some sort of car elevator? Or, you know what? I wonder if it's a giant scale for some reason. Ah, yep, a scale for trucks. 
Seems to be an odd spot for it to exist though, right? Old curved carrying case with wooden insert with uh, 15 holes. Blue cover flap with painted Liberty or Death design. 10 inches long, 3 inches tall, feels like a rough canvas material, has a marking under the flap found in an old estate sale. Okay, liberty or death. I don't know why this photo just makes it look like a cloth. That's it. But clearly that's not all it is. Is it some sort of stupid cigar holder or something, man? Reenactor's cartridge case. Ah, Revolutionary War reenactor. Cosplayer. A reenactor would burn this as heresy. My clothes pegs are all individually numbered. Why is that? Uh, I don't know. Different models have different numbers, so if they start coming out of the machine messed up, they can hide which mold needs replacing. Okay, clever. I was thinking maybe they were numbered for crafts or something, but your explanation makes perfect perfect sense. It does make a lot more sense that it would be part of the manufacturing process for the sake of quality assurance. White circular hard plastic object. Wife thinks it might be some equipment for knitting? Uh, I mean, I guess. The thing behind it, though, that's called a banana, and we eat it. <laughs> Thank you for the scale, by the way. Two of them will hold glow sticks in a globe shape. You can see it here, the bottom one. Oh, well that's a lot less cool. Actually, it's kind of fun. I love glow sticks. What are those vertical poles in my gothic 19th century house stairway for? Um, if you're running really fast, you can grab onto them and swing around, I guess. To protect the corners of the wall, stuff gets chipped easily and looks worn down. Ah, I agree. If not there, many people will plant their hand on the wall for the final step of the first set, and then as they step up the first step of the next, what? Those add up, making smudges slash marks on the wall. I expect it really saves the paint and cornerstones have these. Okay. Found in the middle of a disc golf course in Colorado. Seems like a glass jar with tubing and a toothbrush taped to it. Nothing in the jar that I could tell. Oh god. Uh, yeah, I really don't like this one. Uh, I hope it's nothing sinister. This is a device for collecting ants or any small bugs. You suck on the end that's just barely inside the lid and use the tube that goes to the bottom of the jar to suck up the critters. Some kid lost this while trying to get ants for his ant farm. Edit. The toothbrush is just there to hold the tube upright and keep it from kinking. Ah, such a strange device. Why does it have to look like that? Pop can sized angry faced plastic lady. Well, that sure was a description. At least you're correct on that description. What the hell's this for? <laughs> Oh, that's great. I see water? Is that what that says on the back there? This is an angry mama, used for cleaning microwaves. Take her hair off and fill to the first line with vinegar, then water. She's microwaved for a few minutes, and the steam that's released through her head holes help loosen dried on crud inside the microwave. Okay, I think I need one of these now. What? That's so cool! We've been using this as a doorstop since I was born. I'm 26. It's about 6 to 7 inches tall and weighs 10 pounds-ish. It's incredibly dense. Uh, yeah, what the hell is- is it radioactive? It looks like what you would place an item on when pressing it in a mechanical press. Some friends suggested something similar. I have a 100-ton press at work, fixing trucks, with a rack of press tools that look just like this. What's this hole in my basement wall for? 1845 house with no chimneys on this side. Well, maybe there was one at some point. I actually have no idea. Coal chute, possibly. I had an old house that had one too. Coal would be delivered into the chute to be put into the furnace. Likely solved. I'll have to do some research for evidence of a coal furnace. I have old registers, but the ducts have all been redone at some point in the past. What's this thing on the wall with a round hole and a small screen inside? Uh, well, that's a very, very good question, isn't it? It's a pool access alarm to detect if the gate door has been left open, mostly so children or pets don't wander in and potentially drown. No idea why it's on your wall. All right, what is, what? What is this thing I found in my shower? drain while clearing a clog. Bronze part is metal, black slash white part is rubber with a blue woven strap. All right, let's see. What the hell? Okay, let's see what Reddit had to say, huh? It's a drain plug that inflates and seals the drain during construction, or otherwise when needing to be sealed, and then deflated and removed. Or in this case, not removed. Cleaning out a house and came across this. 
the little cup at the top swings back and forth. Says it's from Japan. Oh boy. Oh, well that's kind of cool looking. Hmm. Seems like the kind of thing you'd have to find in a Resident Evil game to unlock a door. All right, let's see. Tarnish resistant. Sure, sure. It's a bridal cup. Bridal cups are a Nuremberg, Germany tradition that date back to the 1400s. It represents the start of a long union between a man and a woman, and is a symbol of faithfulness and good luck. The small swiveling cup and inverted hollow dress were designed to allow both bride and groom to drink simultaneously to toast their wedding. The groom would drink from the larger cup, the inverted skirt, and the bride would drink from the small swivel cup. Seems really strange. What is this cylindrical shape about 10 meters high with some sort sort of filter on top. Uh -huh. Weird looking. That's what it is. That's all I know. Looks like a giant maraca. It's a vent for something close by underground. If it's got filters, it's probably for a bunker that needed clean air, but it does not look like something from World War II. Looks far too modern for that. Well, bunkers have definitely been built since the end of World War II. Have a look in the area on Google Maps and see if you can find an entrance. Uh, you know what? Uh, I've been watching some Kane Pixel stuff. Maybe just leave it alone. Massive device that's been left outside my workplace for the last week. Aha! Uh -huh. Well, not scary looking at all. All of this stuff is super weird looking, man. I just don't know. The placard indicates it came from a mining company in Mexico. Maybe it's something off of a massive mining machine and is there to be fixed, if you do welding and all that. The packing list says truck frame, so I assume that's what it is, for a very large mining truck. 7495 is a model of Caterpillar mining equipment, so that could be it. Well, I think that one's pretty much solved. I was given this small silver object as a pre-wedding gift with no explanation. It has small lines engraved on it. Huh, it's a little odd, but then again, most of these are. I know it's made of silver, but that's it. It appears to be fairly old. I was born and raised in the US, but ethnically I'm mainly Norwegian, as is the gifter. I don't know if that's relevant, but after looking up Norwegian wedding customs, I thought it could be. Miniature sterling silver wedding vase. Ah, that's interesting. Double bowl sink with a hole connecting them. Tap does not reach the second bowl. All three sinks in this bathroom in a public space had one of these. What is it used for? You know what? Like many other questions we've been asked today, that's a good one. That is a very, very good question. Question. Uh, genuinely can't wrap my head around that. It's for schools. You can put a sponge there. Link is in German, unfortunately. Thank you so much, this has to be it. Still no clue why it's in a public bathroom at an event venue that's definitely not and never was a school, but maybe these sinks were on clearance or something. Anyway, thank you. Well, it's not restricted to schools, obviously. The sponges were meant for blackboards. If that's an event venue, they most likely had blackboards back in the day. At an event venue? Why would they, you know what, it doesn't matter. Found this and have no clue what it is. Black with gray cloth inside. Each sleeve looks like it'd hold something the size of a hot dog. Wasn't found with anything. <laughs> All right, interesting. It's for a coat hanger to make it padded for expensive coats, suits, whatever. This was my first thought. I wish this comment was higher because I'm almost certain it is. Especially when it was found in a closet. This was the closest I could find in two minutes. Ah, right. Okay, I gotcha. What does this plastic cap belong to? The tip comes off and covers a small hole. Huh, well, what's the answer, Reddit? Give it to us straight, baby. It's the mixing cap for a two part epoxy. Mixing cap for a tooth whitener. What? Yes, I used it a few months ago and it looks exactly like this. Same locking mechanism and everything. Now, yeah, some of these are a lot more boring than I thought they would be. What are these brown smelly things I found on the ground at my college campus? <laughs> Wait, what? All right. Yeah. Okay, a little gross. Those look like freezer dried liver treats for my dogs. My bet is someone was walking their dog and dropped the bag. Ah, why'd they need to bring that many with them? What are these little white things all over the fence? They're soft and only on this one section of fence. I wouldn't be touching them. I'm sorry. I have no idea. <laughs> this is some boring <laughs> I meant that literally. You have ambrosia beetles boring into that section of the wood. What you're seeing here is their excrement, or frass. They're invasive and do a lot of damage to fruit and landscaping trees. If you're in the southeastern US, they're already here and known. 
There are other areas of the country where you should report them to your local agricultural office. Either way, now might be a good time to spray the fence and any surrounding trees for them. They'll spread from there once they come out of their boreholes in the spring. Ah, delightful. Found this nearly solid steel cylinder with my front tire and wheel at 70 miles per hour. What? Holy crap, that is a lot of material. Woo-wee! It's a hydraulic ram blank heading to a shop to get finish machined, polished and chromed, big oops for transporter. That's my guess, too. The 11565 might refer to this bar stock item number. The 7.5 inch diameter means it could have been turned down to the dimensions OP gave. You know it's expensive when the price is call us. What? Can't figure out what this electronic item is. It blinks intermittently and is three inches tall and plastic. Okay. Oh, uh, is that not one of those really stupid fake doesn't work at all anti-bug devices or some sh**? Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's an ultrasonic insect repellent. They don't do anything. That's not true. They annoy the hell out of me, which is something. Plus, they waste electricity. So multifunctional. Yeah, I used to think that those things worked. They f***ing don't. Is it a handle? What's this weird handle of a plastic beer cup in Prague? Pre Prague? 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 No, I'm just kidding. Seems a little small for a handle. Sorry for only drinking, uh, uh, okay. No one cares. But yeah, that is a really tiny little handle. I can't find one. One, but I would suspect it's a belt clip for carrying an empty cup. I think you're correct. Here's a somewhat smaller cup. Fourth picture shows it attached to a belt. Yeah, it's definitely for the waiter to carry on a metal rim. <laughs> What is this thing? The inside opens up to an empty space. It's disconnected from the desk below. Uh, I don't know. Why are you asking me, idiot? It's a bed desk. There's supposed to be a metal bar underneath that slots into the wooden tray so you can prop it up at different angles for reading and stuff. It's like a more robust bed slash lap tray. 10 pound egg shaped chunk of lead found in the woods used as a doorstop. Cannonball? That's a weirdly shaped cannonball. I was given this by a friend as a cannonball because I'm a cartridge collector. Uh, it was found in the woods and his family used it as a doorstop. It's 10 pounds exactly. Not sure on diameter, so I used a... Uh, okay. And a 38 special cartridge for scale. What is this thing? It could be a downrigger weight. 8 pounds is common, but 10 is not unheard of. That's starting to sound more like it. I'm not convinced that it's ordinance related. Wish I knew what a downrigger weight was, but I guess that's the answer, right? What's this weird metal thing? Goes through both sides of the wall. House built in the 1910s? Well, was it or not? Why'd you have to put the question mark there? Also, it's a pipe for radiators. You idiot. 